Up next, we have Caitlin Hirsch. She's a junior health studies major with her talk titled, Abortion and the Effects of Its Associated Stigma. Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin, and my faculty advisor is Dr. Sasha Cannon. 638,139. That's the number of abortions that were performed in the United States in 2015 alone. To put that into perspective, that's 11,000 more than the number of residents living in Monmouth County for that same year. So why don't we talk about it? Why don't we talk about abortion? And why is it that the very word makes so many of us uncomfortable? Our society tells us that abortion is a taboo conversation topic, never to be brought up at the dinner table. And regardless of your opinion on the matter, I think we can all agree that abortion is a word we don't hear very often. But I think we should challenge that, and here's why. On May 31st, 2009, Dr. George Tiller was shot and killed at church by an anti-abortion extremist. He was targeted because of his role as medical director at one of the only facilities that was performing late-term abortions at the time. Unfortunately, Dr. Tiller's story is not an anomaly. From 1976 to 2004, there have been 63 acid attacks, seven murders, over 100 bombs and bomb threats, and nearly 200 cases of arson against abortion providers. While all these acts of violence were carried out in different ways, the motivating factor behind them all remains the same, and that's our society's negative stigma surrounding abortion. While these are clearly extreme cases as to what this abortion can lead people to do, it shows just how great an impact it can have. So when I'm referring to the stigma, what exactly do I mean by this? One definition I came across during my research referred to it as a social process which is related to the disgrace of an individual through a particular attribute she holds in violation of social expectations. This stigma can cause many women to feel feelings of discrimination, physical and verbal abuse, mistreatment, and rejection. So how can we change this? How can we as individuals work towards decreasing the stigma? I'll tell you now that there's no one good answer, but there is a simple place for us to start. And that's by talking. Just by opening up the conversation, we reject this idea that abortion should only be talked about behind closed doors. It's the same sense of secrecy that causes many women who have had abortions to feel a sense of shame about their decision. And in turn, it may prevent them from reaching out to loved ones and friends about their experiences in times when they may need the extra support, creating a further sense of isolation for this woman. But if we all make the conscious effort to talk more about the matter, we'll be able to reach a place in which women who have had abortions will feel safe in sharing their stories. So now that we know that starting a dialogue will help our society reach a place, will improve its treatment towards those who have had abortions, where do we go from here? And what do we even talk about? I believe that the best place to start with anything is the basics. Gaining more knowledge about the topic will allow us to better handle these conversations we may encounter in the future. As I mentioned earlier, over half a million women have an abortion each year. And that's not only because of their individual reasoning to do so, but also because it's a relatively safe medical procedure with very minimal risk involved. In fact, only 2.1% of abortions lead to minor complications with an even lower number resulting in major complications that require hospitalization. This low risk level remains the same for the different methods used to perform an abortion. These techniques generally um, are decided based on the gestation of the pregnancy. For pregnancies up to 10 weeks, medications called mifepristone and misoprostol, more commonly known as the abortion pill, are used together to terminate the pregnancy. These medications cause bleeding and cramping, similar to a heavy period or a miscarriage, and cause the emptying of the uterus. For later term abortions, there are typically two methods that are used. Um, suction abortion, sometimes called vacuum aspiration, involves gentle suctioning of the uterus. And dilation and evacuation also involves suction, as well as some other medical tools. Becoming educated in these different methods of abortion uh, procedures is important so that we're able to help spread helpful information to those who may not be familiar. But perhaps more importantly, we should look at the demographic makeup of women who seek abortions. There are many misconceptions as to what this type of woman looks like, so it's important for us to get to the real facts. When we look at the statistics gathered by the Guttmacher Institute, we see that women in their 20s make up the majority of women seeking an abortion, with women in their 30s making up the second largest group. Teens account for only 12% of abortions, 
a shockingly low number to some. Moreover, 64% of, ab of abortion recipients have had at least a limited college experience, and over a quarter of women received a high school diploma or GED. This debunks the idea that women who have abortions are uneducated. Another popular belief people have about those who terminate pregnancies is that they're unfit to be parents or don't want children. While this is certainly the case for some, sorry, while this is certainly the case for some, more than half the women who tamed an abortion in 2014 reported having at least one prior birth, and a third of women reported having two or more births prior to their abortion. Another myth I'd like to challenge is the idea that women who have abortions are atheist or don't follow any organized religion. This couldn't be farther from the truth, seeing as 62% of women who had an abortion reported in a, re a religious affiliation. For some of you, the facts I've shared today may, as come, may come as a shock, and that's precisely why we need to promote these safe spaces in which we can talk about abortion. Getting to the real facts is vital in this dialogue. If we're not armed with background information pertaining to abortions, how can we expect to contribute to these conversations? And how can we expect others to gain anything? Hopefully, after today, some of you will go on to discuss abortions more openly than you have in the past. And I commend you for doing so, because in taking part of this change, there will be fewer stories like Dr. Tiller's, and women across the country will feel safe, secure, and confident in their decision to have an abortion. So I leave you with this. Find the courage to talk about abortion with your friends, your family, your medical provider. Ask questions. Share your experiences. Start the dialogue. And if you're not quite ready to talk, then listen, because ignorance is a danger to us all. Thank you.